And this is the really fun bit, when you get to add some colour to really bring your ostrich to life. Like I said earlier, it's fine to use different colours, but I will demonstrate how I've created my ostrich. First of all, you need to colour the beak. I use the mustard yellow colour to colour his whole beak. Then I use my light brown to add a little bit of shading and definition. We need to make his beak really nice and bold. So make sure you are pushing quite hard with your yellow. And again, if you don't have a mustard yellow, that's absolutely fine. Use what you have to hand. Making sure that we stay in between those nice curved lines that you created earlier. Leaving space to colour in your nostrils black. Again, like earlier, if you need to turn your page slightly, or quite a lot in my case, that's absolutely fine. Whatever makes it easier. Just making sure it's nice and bold, not leaving any white patches. Okay, so now I'm going to use my brown just to add a little bit of shading and definition around the top of his beak, in the corners here, and around the middle part here. So I'll make that quite dark along the top, just a thin line there, and then I'll blend that through his beak getting slightly lighter, so applying a little bit less pressure just so that it blends nicely with my yellow. And in the corner, I'll start off quite dark and then gently and applying less pressure in the corners there. Add a little bit as well to that circular corner there. And again, starting quite dark. here to the front of his beak. And always making sure by moving away from the dark part, applying less pressure so it blends really nicely. It's amazing how much you can actually blend and mix colours when you are using coloured pencils. You just take a little bit of time and care. Okay, then we need our black for his nostrils. So it's nice and dark. And then we have a completed coloured beak. So we'll move on to the eyes now, which we need the black for again. Now remembering that we need to leave these rectangles nice and white to look like the light is reflecting off of them. So starting just above those rectangles on the pupil, colour that in nice and dark, so applying quite a lot of pressure at the top of the pupil. Now as you move down the pupil, you can see it gets a little bit lighter, so we need to again apply less pressure, so hardly anything at all really at the bottom. And this helps to make that pupil look a little bit more 3D, adds a little bit of shape to it. So as you're coming down, you're applying quite a lot of the pressure. And as you move down, just gently building up that colour. If you start light, then you can always make it darker. So it adds a nice 
three-dimensional effect. So I'll do the same over on this pupil here. nice and light but building it up to make it darker just by going over it rather than pressing too hard and then barely putting any colour on the bottom there so we get a really nice glistening three dimensional eye so now we're going to move on to the coloured part of the eye if you have a dark green this is where we're going to start just at the top here of the pupil and just around this bottom edge here. So we'll make that bit nice and dark, but only a little bit of it. I don't go very far at all. And I do the same underneath. Then I use my light green to blend with that dark green so I'm applying quite a lot of pressure to get a really nice blend between the two and then I bring the green out a little the light green out a little bit further okay, so it might be that you need to pick your dark green up and go over the light green a little bit just to blend it that little bit more and then you can see we go from dark green to light green to yellow to then just a little bit of white. So I'm going to pick my yellow up now and start colouring just over the top of the light green to get that blend. Bring it down but not all the way down. I'm going to try to leave a tiny bit of white. So a little bit of yellow over the light green. Bring that down but just leaving a tiny bit of white just there. If I feel I need to blend the yellow and the green a little bit more and pick my green up. There we go. We need to do exactly the same with the other eye. So starting again with a dark green. And then the light green. And really building up the join between the light green and the dark green, help it to blend. And then finally, the yellow. Leaving a little bit white there, and I might just pick up my light green again make that blend between the yellow and the light green a little bit smoother it doesn't suddenly chop and change between yellow and green I might do the same between the dark green and the light green there we are okay now we're going to move on to the edges of the eyes here with the purple now we're just going to use the one purple if you have a look starts off dark at the top and the bottom and then blends to a light light purple that same same pencil but by doing this it helps to create a really nice three-dimensional effect as you move around that eye and then go from the bottom applying lots of pressure getting lighter as you move around you step back and think oh actually no I'll actually bring the dark third around the eye it's always a good idea to stop and have a little look at what you've done and see if you're happy dark around a little bit more and then again exactly the same with the other eye starting off 
by applying lots of pressure, making it dark and then getting lighter as you move round. And again from the top. We are going to have a go at adding some colour to the peacock's feathers. Now this is this is when it's really important to look at the lines that you've already put down onto your piece of paper because this reminds you that by doing those swooping movements you give the effect of the peacock's feathers. So using the purple still, we're going to start by adding some purple to the feathers at the top of the eye on the top of his head and then just around the sides of his beak. So starting with this eye here, I'm not going to apply it too hard and again we're actually putting a lot more feathery lines down than we've drawn. This is where you can be a bit creative as well if you want your ostrich to have more feathers sticking out, then that's absolutely fine. So I'm just following the direction of those feathers. Again, I'm going to turn my page round to make it easier for me to do that on the other side. So I'm starting off quite lightly, but once I've done that, I'm actually going to do some darker lines. Just again, to add a little bit more definition starting off light and then adding some dark lines as well. Okay, now we're going to move on to the edges of the beak here. Let's start in the corner of the beak here. Building up the colour where it's close to the beak, but then as the feathers are moving further away, I'm not actually filling in too much. I'm leaving a little bit of white space because then that's where we can add some different colours. I'll do the same on the other side. Take it further around his beak, just the underside of his beak. Not all the way along because I'm going to add some different colours later. Again, turn the page to help you to use your pencil in the direction of those lines. your ostrich really takes, starts to take a life of its own by adding these really cool, vibrant colours. 